I know you guys have got to be getting out. We've been getting the word. I tell you, uh, the apostles have been teaching on knowing the time and knowing what time it is. Amen. And now here we are. It's not a coincidence that we're going through Bible survey. Amen. It's not a coincidence that the Lord is, no matter what happens, he's always lining things up to show his perfect will. Amen. And I tell you, I was so blessed uh, the last two weeks, especially uh, just seeing the story of Hezekiah. Amen. And then as we're looking and seeing uh, that God gave him some extra time. So I just want to do a tiny bit of review, but just remind us of where we are. So we actually have... Um, covered a good bit. We've started at the very beginning in this Bible survey and we have covered and we have gotten, we've uh, covered uh, uh, Kings and Chronicles and we're getting toward the end and we see that um, um, Samaria has uh, been taken captive, amen? So uh, all of Israel is gone and Judah is left, amen? And Judah is still holding it down and the thing about Judah is that Judah is the line of David and I tell you what I did last night, because as I continued to, to read, I just wanted to know, um, I didn't find it, but I'm going to find it. I want to know how many times the Lord said, I'm going to do it for David's sake. And, I, you know, and, and it said, and when, every time I looked up, it said, it's in the multiple times. I know it's in the multiple times, but oh my goodness, how many times did the Lord say, I'm going to do it for David's sake? For, I tell you, that, that speaks volumes, Amen. And one thing I want to remind everybody that we're, we're re reviewing is the nature and the character of God. Amen. Now, as we're going through and as we're doing this Bible survey, uh, remember, the Lord is showing us his character. And so we have to acknowledge it and get it on the inside of us that the God that we serve is a merciful God. And I want to we, we got to talk about God's mercy, because when we saw his mercy towards Hezekiah, who had done good, amen. But we saw that the Lord changed his mind and allowed him to live longer. But then when we see, um, then we see his son Manasseh comes up and all that he had did. So let's start here. I just want to do a tiny bit of review. And let's look at 2 Kings and just a little small recap. 2 Kings 20 verse 15. All right, there. Right here, remember, let's, we're just going to bring you up the steps. So remember, the reason I want to start here is a reason, because Hezekiah, the Lord had given Hezekiah, he, he had gotten a word from the prophet, and the prophet said, get your house in order. It's time for you to go. Amen? Now, how many of us know that we all have a time to go? Unless we're here when the rapture takes place, which I plan on being here. Amen? <laughs> when the rapture takes place. But if we're not, all of us, are, it's appointed unto man once to die and then unto judgment. Amen? But so when the Lord came and gave Hezekiah a word um, that he needed to get his house in order, the word of God says that Hezekiah was, um, he, he turned his face to the wall and wept. He didn't... Obviously, he didn't feel like he had finished whatever God wanted him to do or he wanted to continue to live. So we know the story. So this is what we, I want you to remember. When he got the word that he was going to die, um, the prophet left and walked off. Amen? And when the prophet walked off, before he had got to where he was going, halfway through, he said, go back. So now I want to remind us about intercession in prayer. Amen. When he turned his face to the wall, that is in there to let us know that God hears us. Amen. And I think that even though we know it, sometimes I don't think we really know it. But God allowed this to be put there for a reason. Before the prophet left Hezekiah, he said, turn around and go back and tell him this. So what does that say to us as men and women of God when we pray and seek God? We're going to see that time and time again that it is important to seek God. Amen. And God always hears us. Amen. He always hears us. We may not get the answer we want. We may not be able to receive it, but we God always hears us. So remember that. And he said, 
verse 20, 15, and he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All things are in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. And one thing Apostle said last week that really got my attention, he said, When you get your blessing, take it and move on. If you get in there and you get to meddling around and somewhere or another pride to get in, and you say, wow, God then gave me 15 more years. Look at me. Well, a few minutes ago, you were crying because you didn't have that time. So sometimes that pride will come in. So when we get blessed, pick up and move on. Amen. That's important. I want to say that we've got to be careful because we know at the very beginning, that's what got Lucifer kicked out is pride. And so when pride comes, we got we to gotta deal with that thing right away. And so I wanted to just do this recap. Just remember, he, and the apostle said, he said, you get blessed. He said, keep going. Move, move on from it. Don't stay there and go, hmm, look at me, look at me. Look at me. Look at what I've done. Somewhere or another that comes in because you'll see it again tonight. There, there's something about pride that we might not quite understand, but we cannot stay in that state. Because after all this, you talk about being humble. God done gave me 15 more years. Let me shut my mouth and do what I need to be doing. Lord, you're so good. Thank you. Oh, I, Lord, we good. <laughs> you're not going to have no more problem out of me. <laughs> but you see, pride crept in and obviously it got in the way. Amen. So the Lord restored him and, um, and gave him 15 more years. Now, when I looked at the 15 more years, I always know this. There's a reason God does everything. And so tonight we're going to see some of that reason because he extended his life. And so when we saw that Manessa came on the scene, now this is the thing. Let me tell you, when Manessa came on the scene, so um, let's get, um, let's see. well, I'm just going to talk about it. I'm not going to read. When Manessa came on the scene, who was worse than Ahab? <clears throat> who is worse than Ahab? I, I'm thinking, who in the world was worse than this guy? But like I said, everything is a reason behind it. See, God allows and he disallows. God is God. And so he allowed Manasseh to be king. Amen? <clears throat> and um, he allowed him to be king, and he was a worse king. But then... We see that Manessa, we see that Manessa was taken into captivity after he did, I mean, he did it all. He went in and he desecrated the, 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 everything. He, he, they were worshiping every single thing. And then later on, we see that he was driven away into captivity. And from my understanding, he was probably there about nine years. I'm not really sure about the years. You know, some scholars differ. But he was there for nine years, and it said that he prayed. But the prayer is not in the Bible anywhere because I wanted to see what he said. Amen? Usually, you know, I want to see what he said. And so I looked and looked, and I didn't find it. But what it said, his, his prayer is written in the book of Sears. So then I kept looking and kept looking. And so in the common English Bible, there is a little prayer that's supposed to be that Manessa prayed. Well, it's not in the original Holy Bible. So, you know, because there, there's a lot of talk about lost books. Amen. But the Lord is specifically wanted what he has in the word, in the word. Amen. So I'm not going to do any digging, but I did look at it. It does show a prayer. And in the prayer, it did make it make sense. You know, he was saying, Lord, I, don't, I know I've done all this stuff. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to do this, and I'm not worthy to do this. But if you will forgive me, da 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 da, da and then however. So we see that Manessa went back. Now, I say that for a reason. There's a scripture. Get, uh, Aaron, get um, Romans, get Romans 8.39. Romans 8.39. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Go back one verse. Now this is um, Romans 8.38, and we read this scripture a lot, but every time I read about how this happened with Manasseh, my mind went to this scripture right here, and it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, no height nor depth. And this height nor depth always messes with me. And, it, I, and I think this says, no matter how high you go, no matter how low you go, 
No matter how high or how low, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so the Lord not only shares us in his word, but he shows us in his word. Because you, when you see Manessa, you see him at a place of no return. I mean, buddy, you're gone. You just outright, Lord, I don't care. And, the, and, the, and if, we, if you remember correctly, they, the Lord sent people to him and said, you need to get it together. And they were like, no, 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 we're not doing that. We're going to do exactly what we want to do. I mean, and he just went as vile as he could. And we see the almighty God, full of mercy, reached and got him and brought him back. Now, we wouldn't have brought him back. We might have said, well, you know, hey, we let you go, but you ain't going to be king no more. You're not going to be this or that. But look at God's mercy. So let's go to uh, Psalms 136, and then I want to go on. But I just cannot go further than let us really ex look at the mercy of God. God wants us to know about his mercy. He wants us to know that he is an all-merciful God. And there's a reason why his word says his mercies are renewed day by day. We need them day by day. Amen. Let's, uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. And it's one I want to believe. Go down to five. To him that by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy endure forever. It's talking about the, I mean, when you read this, it's talking about the goodness of God and the mercy and the wisdom of God. It says his mercy. Now, listen now. Just because his mercies are renewed day by day, but his mercies endure forever. Forever. How should we pray to a God whose mercy endured forever? Oh, Lord, you are good, for your mercy endureth forever. If we can't see anything with Israel, we can see, experience the mercy of God. Amen? So I want to remind us about God's mercy. Amen? And his mercy is available for everybody. His mercy is available for everybody. So now let's get down to business here. I just want to do a little bit of review. But we, I want you to get this uh, Psalms 136, uh, 136 and read that. That's something we should read a lot. Because in this world, because see, there's a scripture that says, Micah 6 and 8 says, What is required of thee, O man, but to do justly and love mercy? He wants us to love mercy. He wants us to extend mercy because he's always extending mercy to us. Amen. He wants us to extend mercy. He wants us to. He says, love mercy. I love to forgive. I, I enjoy forgiving. I love. For, oh, sister, I, I'm so sorry. I love to forgive. I'm so glad you came. I forgave you as soon as I heard about it. <laughs> Ah, oh, glory to God. He, he says, love mercy. Love mercy. We got a ways to go, amen? Because like I said, when we look at Manessa and all the stuff that he done and you know, all that stuff, no, nah, we don't want to love no mercy right now. We want you to get exactly what you deserve. Amen? Okay, so let's get to... Um, um, now... So here we are with Hezekiah. We know he reigned uh, for 29 years. Now, this is the thing. Manasseh reigned for 55 years. He reigned a long time. He reigned a long time from 697 to 642. But let's look here at Ammon, the next one. So let's get... Um, Now let's get uh, 2 Kings chapter 17, um, I'm sorry, chapter 21, verse 17, and we'll start, then we'll read down. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and his sins that he sinned, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Uzzah and Ammon, and Ammon, his son, reigned in his stead. Next verse. 
Ammon was 20 and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Meshulameth, uh, the daughter of Haruz of Jothba. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh did. Now, see, he's living, we're seeing his father doing all this stuff. His father repented, amen? He picked up some stuff from his father. And he walked in all the ways that his father walked in and served the idols that his father served and worshiped them. And he forsook the Lord God of his fathers and walked not in the way of the Lord. Okay, first, let's see here. Now, yeah, because this is almost over. So, um, okay, yes. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him and slew the king in his own house. Now, he only reigned two years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He only served, he was there only for two years, and he reigned. When uh, Ammon was there from 642 to 640, and that was it. Now, uh, and that's it. That's all. I could find a whole bunch more about Ammon, but we know that he was not a good king, and he did everything that his father did. He was not a good king. But see, there's a reason why the Lord gave Hezekiah some more time. See, we see last, time, last week that if um, Hezekiah... Um, wouldn't have gotten to 15 years, Manasseh wouldn't have been born. And if Manasseh wouldn't have been born, um, Ammon wouldn't have been born. But let's see next. See, God has a reason for doing everything he does. Amen? So let's look here. <clears throat> now, let's go to uh, chapter 22. Now, Josiah was eight years old, verse, uh, verse 1, when he began to reign. And he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adadiah of Boscoth. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand nor to the left. Now let's look here. Now this is what I like. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azalah, the son of Meshullam, and the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the, keeper, which the keepers of the doors have gathered of the people. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have oversight of the house of the Lord. So see, in this verse, as soon as he got in there, he started reigning when he was eight years old. And he began to get things in order. He, it said that he, he started serving the Lord, and he wanted things to be done right. Now, look at how far he took it. I, I tell you, it's blessed me. It's really blessed me. Go to um, uh, verse 8. Well, yes, verse 8. And Hilkah, the high priest, as they were down in the Lord's house, what they were doing was getting, getting everything back in order. You remember... Uh, before uh, he be he got there, remember that um, Manasseh, they had messed up everything in the house. And then Ammon came. He didn't do anything in the house. And look at what got lost. And so Hilkah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. Now, it, each king gets a book of the law. Amen? So you know that hadn't been passed down. Nobody's trying to do the law. Amen? So he gets the book, and he says, I done found a book. And Hilkah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. Now let's look at this. And Shaphan, the scribe, came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hands of them that do the work, that have oversight of the house of the Lord. Next verse. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkah the priest had delivered to me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the word of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. Ah, Rabasha. Ah, glory to God. And the king commanded Hilkah the priest and Anakim, the son of Shaphan, and Akbar, the son of Mithna, and Shaphna the scribe, and Ashna, and the servant of the king, saying this. When he heard the word now, this is how we should hear the word. When we hear the word of God, it should compel us to, 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 to get our life, to, to do something. The word of God is alive, amen? When he heard the word, look at what happened. He said, go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all of Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that's 
which is written concerning us. Oh, I tell you, this Bible is written concerning us. And when we look in the word of God, you know what people are saying? They're seeing what they want to see and they're hearing what they want to hear. Amen? Men, uh, 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 men can, a man can marry a man and go and, and preach in the pulpit. We're supposed to read the word and co it compel us. And I tell you, when I saw that, I said, Lord, I tell you, when he, began, when he, saw, when he heard the word of the Lord, it, 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 it compelled him to, he already wanted to serve the Lord. So when you really want to serve the Lord, when you hear the word, the word does that. The word does exactly what it's supposed to do. Amen. And the law of the Lord, when he heard the word, he says, we, we're in this position because of we're not doing right. When, the, when we look in the word of God today and we see it, we're supposed to say, hmm. So we're missing, we're lacking. We're missing, we're lacking. Amen? United States, the whole world, we're in this state because, Lord, we have not obeyed your law. We're in this situation because we have not followed your path. Lord, my family, my this is because I have not honored your word. Amen? So let's look at the next verse. <clears throat> so Hilkah the priest and Anakim, and I'm not going to read all those names again. They rough. Amen? <laughs> Um, they uh, look at this, and Hashem, they went into Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tiva, the son of Harris, the keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. Now look here, and she said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, the mercy of God. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the God that's what? Full of mercy. As touching the words thou hast heard, because thy heart was tender and you have humbled thyself before the Lord. Here's this word again, humble. Humble, because you humbled yourself. Before the Lord, when you heard what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent thy clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee. Here again, I have heard you. Thus saith, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into the grave in peace. He's giving him a promise. You're going to go to your grave in peace. And the evil... And thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king a word again. And then after that, the king, what he did is he gathered all the elders and got everybody together. And he let them hear the law. You all need, because remember, they used to read the law and everybody come in one accord to hear the word. Amen. Remember back when um, uh, Moses was there, they read the law and everybody's hearing. And so here we are, the elders, they read the law. One more verse here. Okay, right here, yes. And the king went up to the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Judah with him, and the priests and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. Amen? So they read the book. And so I, let me show you some other things that he did. Th these, these folks got everything in order here. Let me get verse 20. Okay, now let's go to um, chapter 23, verse 4. Now this is good. This is really good. Now let's look at all that he had did. Okay, and the king commanded Hilkah, the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door. He had already started getting things in order from when he was eight. He started, see, see these things, he had already been setting in order, that the best to, to the best of his knowledge, amen? And then when he heard the word, then that even 
sealed it. Amen. And um, and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for and for the grove and for all the hosts of heaven that he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes unto Bethel. Let's go down. And he put down the idolatrous priest. He, I mean, he went through and did what he could do. The Lord already told him he had, he's going to have peace, but he still continued uh, with the zeal of the Lord. He wanted to do what God wanted him to do. Amen. And um, whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal to the sun. Remember last week we talked, they were worshiping everything in heaven. Amen. <clears throat> sun to the planets and to all the hosts of heaven. And he, and he brought out of the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kedron and burned it at the brook Kedron. Let me go. It's one more verse. I'm going to get there. It's a lot that he did, but it was something I wanted to read to you. Okay, let's go to uh, verse 14. We're going to read verse 14 to, verse 14 to, to verse 16, I believe. And he break into pieces the images and cut down the groves and filled their places with the bones of men. There's a reason why we're seeing this. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel and the high place which, was, which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel the sin, had made, both that altar and the high place he break down and burned the high place and stamped it small to powder and burned the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied sepulchers that were there in the mount and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers and burned them up on the altar and polluted it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed who proclaimed these words. Next verse. Then he said, what title is that I see? Now, as he's going, he's going into sepulchers where people are buried. These, these false priests, whoever they were that were against God, and they went and got the bones out of those sepulchers and burned them. Amen? But then he says, what title is that I see? And the men of the city told him, it is the sepulcher of the man of God, which came from Judah 300 years ago, and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. Amen? Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's go to 1 Kings 13, verse 1 through 3. That's 1 Kings 13, verse 1 through 3. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam... You see who he's talking to? Jeroboam stood by the altar. We remember this because Jeroboam went in there burning uh, incense, remember? Uh, he went there burning incense. Amen? Let's go to the next verse. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the house the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee. This altar that he was burning, uh, worshiping uh, Baal in there, and the men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is a sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Now, this, is, this is over 300 years ago. The Lord prophesied about Josiah coming. So now that takes us back. So when Hezekiah prayed for more years, he was praying according to the will of God. Amen? Because Hezekiah was born, then Manasseh was born. Amen? And then after Manasseh was born, then Ammon was born. And then when Ammon was born, they were fulfilling prophecy when Josiah came on the scene because they got this word 300 years ago that, hey, somebody coming. They're going to take care of this mess you're doing in here. And this is what's going to happen. But look at God showing us time and time again. So see, I, to me, I believe that God always confirms, conform, 
confirms his word. Because if he didn't, you'll hear apostles say all the time, if he didn't lie about this, he didn't lie about that. But let me tell you something. Time after time after time after time, God performs, confirms his word. Amen? 300 years before he was born, even before uh, Jesus Christ came, even before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Look at God. God is an awesome God. He is a God full of mercy, but he is, he is enjoying confirming his word, letting us know who he is. He is the almighty God. And so the reason he does it, because he knows that in our infinite, our finite mind, we can't comprehend it. So he says, well, let me show them. Let me show them. Let me show them my mercy. Let me let Manessa go and do all this stuff. Let me allow, because he allows what he, dis, he allows and he disallows. He said, let me show them how far my love goes. Let me show them how deep my love is. Let me show them how long I am. Let, him, let, me, let, them, let me show them how long my long suffering really is. Let them understand that my mercy is renewed. Let my mercy can grab a hold of them. My mercy. We, I tell you, the Lord is showing us his character. And remember the nature and the character of God. He's saying now also, here we are as intercessors. He says, tell him I heard him. That's not just for them, that's for us. Tell him I heard him. I'm, I'm telling you, I just, I'm stuck on this thing with Hezekiah. Even though I've read it time and time again, he says this guy didn't get this far before he said go back and tell him something different. For those of us that call upon him in spirit and in truth, for those of us that humble ourselves before him, he will show himself mightily. Amen? He will show himself mightily on those of us that call upon him in spirit and in truth and in faith. Amen? And, and I tell you, so Josiah came and did all of this stuff that was prophesied 300 years before he came on the scene. The Lord had already said it. So then when you see the word, you're looking back, you go, Lord, you're good. Lord, you're mighty. So now let's look at um, let's look at Luke 18. I usually write a note beside it. Luke 18, verse 38 through 40. Does this go here? Maybe. Let me see. Well, you know, when I kept thinking about uh, the son of David, remember, he, he, the Lord, every time we turn around, the Lord was doing stuff for David's sake. And now when we get to the New Testament, this came to my mind because when Jesus was there, this guy said, I, you know, he, he's crying out. He said, Jesus, that son of David. The Lord is faithful to David. The Lord is faithful to David. Amen. But yeah, I don't want to use that. That's what I kept. I kept wrote that scripture down. Let's get um, uh, Psalm 75 and 6. 70, uh, Psalm 75, verse 6. Well, I tell you, yeah, I tell you what, before you get that, get Proverbs 20, 24. Let's, get, let's, let's go back there. Let's get Proverbs 20, 24. We need to keep this scripture right here. Proverbs 20, 24. A man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? You know how we think, oh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do this. It says that man's goings are of the Lord. See, <laughs> man's goings are of the Lord. So see, when Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, the Lord hadn't turned his face to the wall. The Lord, the Lord knew he was going to turn himself to the wall. The Lord knew when he told him he wasn't going to live, he knew he was going to pray because he wanted to live. And the Lord says, I got a plan for you anyway. I already know you're going to live. Amen? It says, man's goings are of the Lord. Who, how then, see, you hear apostles say all the time, you're not here. Tonight, the Lord knew all who was going to be here. He knew who was going to be here. He knew who wasn't going to be here. Our, our steps are ordered by the Lord. Amen? Amen. And we see time and time again, I just, you know, it blessed me when we see about Cyrus even sending the people back. I mean, the Lord touches hearts. I'm telling you, when he wants something to happen, he knows whose heart to touch. So we don't have to worry. See, when we look at the world and all that's going on, we don't have to worry about what's going to happen. We need to pray and trust God. And we know that he allows and he disallows. Amen? So get the next one. Let's get um, Psalm 75 and 6. And if you don't have this one, circle, circle it in your Bible. This one, too. This one's good. That's Psalm 75, 6. 
And you hear it all the time, but I want to show you where it's at. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Next verse. But God is judge. He put it down one, and he set it up another. He put it down one, and he set it up another. You know, sometimes, you know, what I'm looking at, people just doing all this, they upset about the, the election and who's going to do this. God is in charge. See, see, we don't walk like the world. We don't act like the world. We don't think like the world. We know that we have to participate, but we know that the outcome belongs to God. Amen? And what we do, we're going to do is we're going to trust God with the outcome because he said in the last days, perilous times are going to come. We're not ignorant. We understand. We already know it. Amen. He's given us a warning. Be, be, a guard, be, uh, be on guard. Be aware. But these are the things that's going to come. Amen. And so God is the judge. And he put it down one and he set it up another. Do we not see this with these kings of Israel? Do we not see this with these kings of Judah? He meant that there was going to be a king in the line of Judah came, that came from David from the beginning. He meant that. And that's what it was. And he meant when Jesus Christ was going to come in the line of David, that's exactly what he meant. Now, who can fulfill that but God? Who can bring that to pass but God? None of us. Not in our own uh, strength. How many of us have tried to do a lot of things and messed up stuff? You know, we saw that. Uh, how, we've done a lot of stuff and messed up. Amen? Uh, we mess up. We mess up. Amen? And so before we see before Josiah was born, let's go here. So we read. Now I want to show you something else. Let's get. Now I want to talk a little bit more about Josiah, but I want to go to Chronicles. Amen. Let's get Second Chronicles. Chapter 33. We're going to read a little bit of that. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 25. And we're still talking about Josiah. Okay, no, he's going to go down. We, we passed that. Go to chapter 35, verse 1, I believe. Now, this is interesting right here. Now, let's read this for a moment. Now, after Josiah did everything that he did to get things in order, let's look at what else he did. Moreover, Josiah kept the Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. And he set the priest in their charge. Now, I'm, I'm not going to read all that, but Josiah kept, he kept Passover, amen? Go down to, go down to verse 18. After, I mean, they did, they, they, he kept Passover. Look, look, look what the word says about it. Or go, go down to verse 18. And there was no Passover like uh, Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Listen, you know, Samuel the prophet, to up until this point, there was no Passover like that kept prior to this before, uh, from the time of Samuel, look at that big old gap that they did not even keep the Passover. They were just going further and further and further and further uh, out, of, out of track. And it says, neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept. And the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Amen. And so in the 18th year of the reign of Josiah was Passover kept. And we know he started reigning when he was eight years old. Amen. So Josiah, he, it said that he kept the Passover unlike had not been. I mean, he was man, he was getting things in order. And we would say, well, Lord, why do you turn things around with Josiah then? But God has a plan. Everything happened for a reason. He, 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 uh, he still was going to allow Judah to go into captivity. Amen. Judah still had to go to go to captivity. Things had to go as God planned them to go. Amen. Everything had to go. But let's look here. There was something else. That one was in. I wanted to show you what happened with, with, with um, I think it's the next, next chapter here. Okay. 
I found it. This is this is the last one I want to be able to go to over. So let's get um, let's get Second Kings chapter twenty three. Verse 25. And we're still talking about Josiah. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 25. And we're going to end with that one. Now they're talking about Josiah here. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might. Now this is, does this sound familiar? What's the greatest of the commandments? Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. Is that, does that sound familiar? And it says, no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. Next verse. Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah. He was, Judah was still there. Judah was still going to have to be dealt with. Amen. God is a God of mercy, but God is also a God of justice. Amen? And I think that that's something that people don't understand. Why don't God do this? Why don't God stop the tsunami? Why do God let the tornado come? God is a God of order. God is a God of justice. Amen? And it says, uh, notwithstanding the Lord didn't turn his fears due to because of the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him with all. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as I have removed Israel and will cast off this city of Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said my name shall be there. He's saying even the place I put my name there, I'm casting it away. Amen. Next verse. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Now let's go to the next verse. But let's look here. In the, now this is something that happened with Josiah. In the days of Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh, Honeco, I don't know, I'm, get that name, king of Egypt went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates and king Josiah went against him and he slew him at Megiddo and um, he slew him at Megiddo when he had seen him. Next verse. Okay, let's stop right there. Now, yeah, yeah, I was thinking this part was in Kings but it's in Chronicles but for time purposes. So what happened was um, the king, well, I better read it. I better read it just for the sake of that. I don't want to take it out of a, a, let me get it. Hold on a second. I better read that because it um, Chronicles. I think it's Second Chronicles thirty three. Give me a second. Nope. Give me one minute. Okay. Let's get a uh, Second Chronicles uh, 30, 35, verse 19, and we'll read down a little bit. We'll end with this. I want to show you this piece here. <clears throat> In the 18th year of the reign of, Jos uh, of Josiah was this Passover kept. We just talked about that. He kept the Passover, amen? So let's look at that one next. After all this, after all that happened, after him doing everything that he felt the Lord called him to do, I'm assuming a period of time when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish of Euph Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. Okay, what's going on here? But he sent ambassadors to him saying, what have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste, forbear thee from meddling with God, who is who is with me that he destroy thee not. Now look at this now. It says here he, he went out there. Now I brought this up again because pride. Now the Lord told him, hey, you're doing a good job. I, I'm going to spare you. You humble your, my, yourself before me. But when God bless you, move on from that. Pride, I tell you, pride can sneak in because if he, he went out there and, 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 and start fighting. So look at the next verse. Let's look at that and you'll see what I mean. Let's look at the next verse. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguise himself 
that he might fight with him and hearken not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. Now, see, this is the thing. He, it, it, some, something, sometimes when people get big, they think they're bigger than life. Have y'all seen that? With, you know, when people get big. But see, he, somewhere along the line, I believe this was pride too. It doesn't say why he wanted to fight. It didn't say whatever. I know God allowed it. But it says he went out there and he says, hey, you need to go on about your business. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Why are you out here fighting with me? Next verse. And the archer shot at King Josiah. The king said to his servant, have me away, for I am sore wounded. Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. His servants therefore took him out of the chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem and he died and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his father. And all of Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. You see, see, number one, we're not perfect. God knows we're not perfect. We're not perfect by far. But let me tell you something. This may not have been pride, but to me it looks like some pride got in. He, out, he wanted to fight. He wanted to, hey, I'm, I'm coming out here. I'm doing what I want to do. The Lord, said, the Lord said, this don't have anything to do with you. You turn around and go back. Let's, we have to guard ourselves against pride at all costs. Amen? We cannot allow pride to be in our heart. The word of God says pride comes before the fall. Pride comes before the fall. So when we're reading the word, let us take heed. Let us take caution. The word says, how can you, he says, don't be just hearers of the word and uh, be doers of the word. If you do that, he says, then you're deceiving yourself. And that always sticks with me. It says, don't be just hearers of the word, be doers of the word. Because if you just hear the word, then you're walking in self-deception. You're deceiving. It says, deceiving yourself. Deception is serious. So when people come and they hear the word and they just walk about, oh, it's no big deal, that's nothing. Don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. We got to watch ourselves so we won't be deceived, amen? So that's, that's as far 